Well, hello and welcome to C3 Reflect Today. My name is Sat and you are joining us as we talk about Lonely is a Lie. Great to have you with us on this fine Sunday morning or whenever you are catching up later. Uh, if you are brand new today, can I just encourage you to do two quick things and that is hit subscribe right here on YouTube so you can get this content coming your way again every Sunday and extra stuff throughout the week um, as well. And also, if you'd like to jump on our mailing list, find out a bit more about who we are and all that sort of jazz, you can go to our website, c3reflect.church slash connect and that's a great next step um, for you. Well, uh, if we've not had a chance to meet uh, before this moment, my name is Sats and my wife Emma and I were the lead pastors here at C3 Reflect. We're part of the C3 uh, movement across the globe, maybe 500 plus churches. Uh, love being a part of this family of churches and uh, being a part of what God is doing um, in our world. And of course, we are in London. Uh, we've got locations um, over in the Docklands and also in Balham. And uh, yeah, it's just so nice to get to share these moments um, with you now. And uh, we're in this series called The Science of Worship. And uh, I hope you've been enjoying it. You can check out uh, all of the previous weeks on YouTube um, here um, and it's really just about this idea of God's design uh, for us and how we relate to him you know God is not a God of chaos he's a God of order and um, there are boundaries to life just like this gravity that keeps us uh, keeps me floating in the right place for the camera right now uh, there's all sorts of uh, boundaries and rules and laws about that we see in creation and through science itself and so um, doesn't it make sense that there are also laws around, as we know about relationships, about how our relationships flourish and, and also about how we relate to God himself. And so our heart with the series is just to really try and dial into some of those things and understand why they're there. And uh, some of the things that we take as being just a cultural kind of thing, oh, it's that sort of church, they do that there. Um, often a lot of those things are actually um, found in scripture and uh, they're things that hey, this is actually part of God's command and God's design for us to flourish. Um, so today, if you're taking notes, um, the, the title of today's message is Lonely is a Lie. Lonely is uh, a Lie. I want to read you quite a long passage of scripture. So maybe you want to grab your Bible. It's in Hebrews um, chapter 10. And uh, just some really interesting stuff about God's design for our life in community. So I'll, I'll read it for us now. So in verse 19 of chapter 10, it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened up for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest or great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as, it, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace? That's wild, that phrase right there. 
For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property since you know that, that you yourselves had a better possession an abiding one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward for you have need of endurance so that when you've done the will of God, you may receive what is promised for yet a little while and the coming one will come and will not delay but my righteous one shall live by faith and if he shrinks back my soul has no pleasure in him but we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed but of those who have faith and preserve their souls um wow church this is just a wild wild passage of scripture with so much in there and so much stuff that almost like wow I, I don't know if you've read that before uh, but it's a it's an eye opener and there's some great truths in there uh, that we're going to unpack um, now this the, the book of Hebrews was was written uh, we don't know who the author is some think it might have been Paul the Apostle but whoever it was um, wrote to this 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 group of uh, messianic Jews if you like I mean the church um, Jesus was a Jew the church started with Jews it was shared to the Gentiles as well. Things began to really take off all over the place. And, and so we're fast forwarding um, to a point where um, this community of, of these particular Jews had experienced a lot of persecution and hardship for following uh, the Messiah, Jesus. And, um, and uh, uh, the, the author of Hebrews is, is trying to communicate some important truths here uh, about, about God. And a lot of the references that we see here are references to things that we might read about in the Old Testament, uh, the law that was given to Moses. And so right here it opens up talking about how we, we've got access to enter into um, the Holy Holy places by the blood of Jesus. And uh, in the temple um, back in the day, there was this place called the Holy of Holies, which was like the very most innermost part of the temple. And, and nobody could go in there. No one was allowed to go in apart from maybe once a year, the high priest, the top dog and the priesthood would be allowed to go in and, and to, to atone for the people and offer a sacrifice. And uh, so holy and so awesome was that moment that what they would do is they would tie like a piece of rope around his uh, ankle um, just in case when he went in, if there was some sort of secret sin or something that was not quite right um, in that most holy place, they would, they would be able to pull him out <laughs> <laughs> from the Holy of Holies because they tied a piece of rope to him. And so what we're reading about here is, 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 is that the Bible is reminding us of the wonder and the awe of what we have, this access, this ability to enter because of the blood of Jesus, who of course is our great high, high priest, who has made a way for us. He's atoned for us so that we can actually enter into the Holy of Holies. So I know sometimes for us in the 21st century, we're like, cool, that sounds good. Like, but, but I think this passage of scripture really helps us understand the, the severity and the intensity of how amazing that actually is. When we, when we gather together to worship God as a community, we have access to the most holy place. And uh, we can talk to God. We can uh, connect with God. We can draw near to him. And so this whole context is trying to help us understand how important it is and, and clearly there are some people in this particular time who have for whatever reason have just kind of been disconnecting disconnecting from community and it talks about the persecution that they went through and the difficulties and and man they, this was a, a tough time for the early church and you know it's I don't know if we can compare it but I do think over the last two years it has been a tough time and uh, we, as people, have gone through all sorts of things. I, I don't know what your individual story is, but I'm sure there's some things that you could tell us about what you have walked through in these last couple of years. And, 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 and coming through all of that and coming through an atmosphere and a culture that has actually very specifically said, human beings are dangerous. Don't draw near to people. Don't come into contact with people. And I'm not here to comment on how information is communicated from that side of things in society. But what I do want to do today is I want to bring you some truth 
from the word of God about God's design for human flourishing. Because we are already seeing the news stories start to roll out saying, here's the impact of what social disconnection and what isolation is doing amongst our children, amongst our young people, um, amongst people who had exams, the uncertainty, the whole deal. We've, heard, uh, we've had enough conversation about the pandemic. We're bored of the pandemic. We wanna just live our lives now. But, but I think it's important for us to acknowledge that we have actually walked through some things and, and some of that fear and that worry and that just general heaviness of the season might still be with us and it might be affecting perhaps how we think about God, about church, about community. But I'm here to tell you today that human beings are designed by God to flourish in spiritual community. Um, man, if, if there is one thing that is more dangerous than COVID-19. If there's one thing that's more dangerous than, than, than even death, it is spiritual death. And we simply cannot flourish as human beings. And it's so, so interesting to me here that, that when it talks about, hey, don't neglect to meet together, straight away it begins to talk about sin. So, so here's, here's what we're going to find is, is that, that but when there's sin in our hearts, you know, if you've made a mistake or there's some stuff that you're deliberately kind of, you know, just, oh God, I don't really want to deal with that or we'll figure that out later. What that does to our prayer life and our relationship is that we're hiding something. You know, if you're hiding something in a relationship, um, that, that never, it only puts up barriers between you and another person. Uh, if something's happened and you just need to come clean and just if something's small or big, that it creates barriers in our relationship. And, and what we can see is, is that God doesn't want there to be any barriers. God doesn't want you to be disconnected. God doesn't want any of us to fall away. His heart is for you and he wants to invite you in and he's paid the price by giving the blood of his son Jesus spilled for us. So, so there's, there's no um, you know, a malice on God's part. There's no um, you know, uh, agenda on his part. His, his agenda is pure. He's good and he loves you. And uh, he, want, he wants you to, to, to draw near. But what we need to understand is that there is a link this is where the link is. The link between us drawing near to God is it's connected to us drawing near to people. This is how God has designed it. God has designed for us to draw near as a community. There is, there is something about that word togetherness that is in our design. And so the Bible's saying, don't neglect togetherness. Even though it's been a season where we've been encouraged to neglect togetherness, as we now begin to, we've come through that, we need to endure and we need to reprioritize and we need to rethink and we need to challenge ourselves because we don't want to be people who shrink back. We want to be people who endure to the end. We want to be people who come through. We don't want to be people who live in fear. Uh, uh, we, we want to live uh, with the right sense of reverence and awe, uh, as the Bible describes here about the fear of God. We want to live with that in the forefront of our mind so that we wouldn't miss out on all of the, the benefits and the joys and the wonders of what we get in the presence of God. I, I can promise you this, that, that if you begin to disconnect from the community of God, you will find yourself disconnecting from God himself. And I can also promise you this, that if you begin to disconnect from God himself, you will also begin to disconnect from community. The two things are linked. It's in God's design and it always has been. Think back to the tabernacle and the temple and the communal worship, communal gathering. Doesn't mean we need to spend every waking moment together. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're not an individual person and you're not a unique person with your own gifting, your own calling. That's all awesome. And uh, you know we understand that super well in our Western culture. But I think what we often miss is the reality that we are designed for community and Man, I, 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 I just, I've got to strongly encourage us that there are parts of your life, if you feel disconnected right now, if you feel withdrawn right now, there are parts of your life that are not flourishing uh, because God's design for you is that you draw near to him and you draw near to others to be a part of the church. And here's, here's what's really interesting because right here references all these things that have happened for this particular group of people. And uh, one of the things that, that I know makes us feel like as human beings um, that, that we might want to disconnect or is, is the feeling of being disconnected. So it's a bit of a paradox, right? Because, but, but you know, if you begin to feel like, I don't know if I'm welcome. I don't know if I'm needed. I don't know what my fit is. And that's what the last two years have done, done for us. And that's what life tries to do to us, to make us feel like we don't have hope, to make us feel like 
we're alone. And that's why I called this message, Lonely is a Lie, because uh, your feelings are absolutely valid. Your experience is absolutely real. So I don't wanna take away from that. But what I do wanna tell you is that your feelings are not always true. How you feel, how you're processing things, that's all legit, but it's not always the highest level of truth in your life. The truth is, is that you have been given access to God and to his people, and that you have a home in Christ. You have a home in his body, and in you are designed to play your part, that you do fit in, that you are called by God. You're called out. That's what ecclesia, the word for church, actually means. Those called out, the assembly, the gathering of those who are called out. You have been called out by God. Loneliness is a lie. Disconnection is a feeling that we have that can create further disconnection. And the, the enemy in this world loves loves to disconnect people, loves to isolate people because he knows that when we are disconnected, we will actually also find ourselves disconnected from God. I find that, um, you know, if there's any deep thinkers uh, or any people with a good imagination or creative people, it is easy for your thoughts to spiral on your own. You know, someone says something, situation kicks off, life happens, uh, drama. <laughs> it's all around us. And we can find that, that, that outside of community, on our own, left our own devices, our imagination can oftentimes be unhealthy. And I find that as soon as I bring what's happening in my world to friends and to people who are coming at life from a good perspective, I find that this balance, I find that this correction, and I find that it's possible for us to live in a distorted reality outside of community. And that's why God has designed us to live a life of togetherness. Um, it's, it's because every single one of us on our own are, are, are susceptible to fear, we're susceptible to uh, confusion, we're susceptible to um, illness, we're susceptible to all sorts of things outside of the, the, the connection of community because God's design is for you to flourish inside community. And so we find this kind of catch-22 where oftentimes the, the, the time that we least feel like going to dinner parties, the time that we least feel like, oh, I wanna keep that coffee arrangement that was in, the time that we least feel like going to church is, is normally the time that we most need to draw near and come to God. And I wanna just encourage you today because I have no doubt that there are people watching this and you do feel, that's exactly how you feel. And it's like, oh, I just, I just feel unsettled. I just feel like I'm not in a good place right now. Isn't it amazing that we feel like we need to get in a good place before we come to church? Or we need to be in a good headspace before we connect into community? It's actually the other way around. We come into community. This is what grace does. Grace allows us to have access to come exactly as we are. And in the context of community, in the context of God's presence, together, we'll actually find the healing and strength will come. So your feelings, they're, they're true. But if you are led by your feelings as number one, you will make some really bad decisions. You need to be led by the word of God and the decision of your heart to say, I'm gonna be a person who puts the word of God first. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna acknowledge my feelings because that's a healthy thing to do. The last thing we wanna do is like, repress and push down and so you can go to God and you can you can talk to church community and friends about anything can I encourage you there are no topics that are off limit there's no stuff that we are walking through that we need to hide we may want to be selective and just wise about who we share those things with that's probably a good thing as well but 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 we don't need to feel like I'm a mess and I can't bring my mess to the church I can't bring my mess to God because every single one of us is here given access not by our, our great works, but by the blood of Jesus. We get access and then it's in that place that we actually experience our healing and encouragement and the ability to endure and a fresh perspective and the renewing of the mind and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the greatest lie for, for us as, as Christians or, or people who are trying to explore faith or follow Jesus is, is that we've got to get our stuff together before we come. It's, it's completely untrue because what you will find, here's the other thing as well, is that when we come to the house of God, we see everybody looking great. Because what you're going to find is that everybody feels great on Sundays. Everybody feels energized in that moment about, you know, sometimes it takes us a few moments to you know, get into worship and, you know, warm up a little bit. But you're going to see everybody at a, at a highlight of their week. 
And so we come bringing all our stuff, feeling like everybody else is having a great life. But what you don't know is that they are also walking through behind the scenes. People are figuring out uh, issues with their kids. Behind the scenes, people are having stressful uh, work environment. Behind the scenes, people are struggling in their mind. Behind the scenes, people are weighed down by depression, and guilt and shame. Behind the scenes, people are struggling with addiction. And, and the, the, the hope of the world is the church because what we find is that when we come into community, we will actually be able to begin to unravel healing. And this is God's design. God's heart for you. So let's not be people that shrink back. Let's be people who draw near. Loneliness is a lie. Fear is the great liar. The devil is a liar. And his vision for your life is disconnection. God's vision for your life is so that you draw near, you'd experience his presence, and you'd find community. And that's why our vision is to help you connect into community. You'd be transformed into the image of Christ and that you'd be released into influence in your world. That's, that's our prayer. But everything begins with connection. I just wonder if there's some people right now you need to make the decision to draw near. And oftentimes that's, that, that decision itself is what actually draws us back into community. So you're probably at home on your own right now watching this, but I know right now that this is a faith moment. As you make that decision, this is going to be a catalyst unlocking something in your life because your words are connected to your will. Um, you know, it's, it's, and as you make that declaration out loud, I want you to do this together with me right now. Don't just, you know, in, the, in your head. No, make it a conversation. Make it a prayer between you and God right now. Prayer is just conversation with God. It's not complicated. It's just you talking to Jesus and he, he's like so, so wanting to talk to you. <laughs> he's just waiting for you to start the conversation. He, you know where he is. You just gotta bring yourself to the same point. So let's pray this prayer right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for being withdrawn, for being disconnected. I'm making the decision right now in this moment to draw near. Amen. You know, when we draw near to God, the Bible tells us that God will draw near to us. So I pray right now for every person watching, Holy Spirit, that they would feel your presence, your comfort. They would feel your, just, just the comfort of your presence, Lord. Fill them. And we pray over some of the issues in their mind that are causing great anxiety and worry. We pray, Lord, peace in the name of Jesus. We pray where there is sickness or illness in the mind or in the body, we release healing right now. If that's you and you need to receive healing in an area of your life, I want you to lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands to God. And I'm gonna believe right now for the power of God to fill the, the space that you're in and for the healing power of God to touch you right now. Holy Spirit, heal every person who is in need of a touch from God right now in the name of Jesus. Well, gosh, this has been so good to share these moments with you. Uh, thanks for being a part of today. And don't forget, get connected. Go to the website, uh, c3reflect.church slash connect. And why don't you come and join us in person in our Docklands or Balham location? There is more that God wants to do um, that requires your physical presence and you are designed to flourish in the context of, uh, of community. God bless you. Catch you soon. Have a great week.